Welcome to the computational fluid dynamics portion of mathematical methods in engineering, the course ME3004. Since the title of this chapter is such a mouthful, you'll hear me calling it CFD for short. So what is CFD? Simply put, CFD is a method of solving differential equations. Let us recall what does it mean to solve a differential equation. To answer this, let's get clear of what a differential equation is. Differential equations are basically any equations that involves derivatives, like in these examples. As you can see, in each equation, there is some function differentiated with respect to a variable. So now, let's understand what does it mean to solve a differential equation. Solving a differential equation is the process of finding a function to satisfy the differential equation. In this example, solving this differential equation means finding the function y such that when we put the expression for y back into the equation, the left-hand side should equal to the right-hand side. Let's go ahead and solve this equation. Remember that we're solving for y, so basically, we'll make y the subject of this equation. To take y out of the derivative, let's go ahead and integrate both sides of the equation. Integrating the derivative of y gives back y and the integral of x becomes x squared over 2, because we need to apply the rule power plus 1, then divide by the new power. And don't forget to add the arbitrary constant. And so we found that y is equal to x squared over 2 plus c. As a practice, let's go ahead and check if this expression for y solves the differential equation. So what we will do is, we need to substitute this expression for y into the left-hand side and check if we eventually arrive at the right-hand side of the given differential equation. So we start with the left hand side, which is dy dx. Then substitute the solution we got earlier, and let's differentiate this expression. For the first term, we need to use the rule power bring down power minus 1 to obtain x. Then for the second term, recall that deriv the derivative of a constant is just 0. As you can see, we started with dy dx and eventually arrived at x. Hence, we managed to show that dy dx is equal to x. This shows our expression for y is indeed correct. So from earlier, this entire process of finding y is called solving the differential equation. And this expression for y is known as the solution to the differential equation. Let's recall that we're interested in getting to know CFD. Just to be explicit, this whole process is not CFD. So what's so special about CFD? In essence, CFD solves a specific kind of differential equation, known as the transport equation. So how does CFD solve differential equations? A typical CFD problem would look something like this. Solve d phi dx equals to x over the domain from 0 to 5 inclusive. The first step is to discretize the domain. This simply means we will chop up the domain into a certain number of pieces. In this example, we cut up the domain into 5 equally sized segments as shown. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Each of the five segments will generate a linear equation. The unknowns in the equation is the central value of phi within the segment, basically the value of phi in the middle of each segment. So segment 1 will generate equation 1, segment 2 will, equa will generate equations 2, and so on. For now, do not worry about how to generate these equations. In due course, we will learn how to go about it. The important thing for now is to realize that we have 5 equations with 5 unknowns. Thus, we will be able to solve for phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4, and phi 5. Let's imagine that we managed to calculate these values of phi, and they happen to be the list of values here. Let's go ahead and plot these values of phi against their respective x. So, we have phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, phi 4, and phi 5. 
just through observation, you can imagine the approximate shape of phi of x. Remember that this phi solves the differential equation. Do keep in mind that this shape of phi is imagined by us. Technically, it's not there. So that begs the question, what is the value of phi in the gaps between each of the known points? Well, the long story short is, we don't know. This happens to be the limitation of CFD. We can only get an approximate idea of how phi varies with time and space. Fortunately, we can get around this limitation simply by increasing the number of segments from the process of discretization. This is called mesh refinement, or simply making the mesh fine. So instead of starting out with 5 segments, we can instead start with 10 segments. Or even better, how about 20 segments. As you can see, by refining the mesh, we reduce the gap sizes, thereby reducing the uncertainty in the unknown segments. In real engineering problems, it's more common to involve the use of thousands of segments. But remember, each segment represents an equation to solve. So hang on, thousands of segments would mean we, have, we would have to solve thousands of linear equations. Obviously, this would be a tedious task to undertake manually. This is why we will employ the use of computers to solve the systems of equations for us. And that makes the computational part of computational fluid dynamics. If you found this video to be a helpful start into CFD, please donate to me and support the growth of the channel. It really helps to keep the lights on. Until the next video, see you then.